honestly, I needed a break from physical chemistry. I love organic chemistry. And that's why I have an entire series about reaction-based questions. And the last one which we discussed was for 2020 set three. The questions have been obtained from the iitnacademy.com. Um, the link is also available in the description below. Do check it out. Um, so we're doing set four questions. And remember, in this series, we discuss all the reaction-based questions that have come uh, that have come in the previous papers. And not only that, I will be, you know, maybe giving you some helpful tips and tricks and maybe all of this will facilitate you understanding this much better than you do right now. So question number eight. So we need to write an isomer isomer of the formula C3H9N. So let's write the C3H9N. Now it has, uh, so this has a nitrogen atom, which means it can be an amide, it, um, it can be an sorry, it can be an amine or a cyanide. So, but they've given us a specific um, uh, characteristic of this particular compound that it gives a smell of isocyanide when it's treated with chloroform and ethanolic NaOH. And this particular reaction is given in your textbook where an amine, that is RNH2, on reaction with CHCl3, that is chloroform, and KOH, it's KOH in your textbook. And here we have NaOH, it's essentially almost the same. And this on heating gives us RNC, which is an isocyanide. So, uh, and the byproducts are 3 KCl and water, CH2O. So in our question, we've, we need an amine and the R group represents the carbon part. So it's going to be CH3, CH2, CH2, and NH2. Now let's count the number of hydrogens. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Sorry, NH2. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 hydrogen atoms is correct. And you have 1, 2, and 3 carbon atoms. So this is the isomer of C3H9N which on reaction with chloroform and ethanolic NaOH will give us an isocyanide. That is all. The next question over here, we've been given question number 32. Uh, the first one, write the structure of a major alkene formed by beta elimination of 2,2,3-trimethyl-3-bromopentane with sodium ethoxide in ethanol. Honestly, when I looked at this question and saw the name of the structure or the name of the compound, I was like, uh, what do I do? So what I would suggest for you to do is first draw the structure of the compound they've given us. Okay, look at that alone. So first of all, it's a pentane, right? So a pentane will have, okay, let me put the number first, sorry. Okay. A pentane will have five carbon atoms, correct? So one, two, three, four. Five, five carbon atoms. Now, at the third position, you have a bromine atom. So you can either come from here or here. The third position has a bromine. That is three bromo pentane. Next, at the second and the third position, you have methyl groups and you have three methyl groups at second, second and third, which means you have a methyl group at the second carbon atom, CH3, two methyl groups, two, two, right? And here you have the other methyl group. Fill in the rest of the hydrogen atoms. Pretty easy, right? Now, if you realize or not, they have actually given us a lot of information in this particular question. All we need to figure out, like you're not even asked, oh, what happens when this particular compound reacts with sodium ethoxide and ethanol? They are merely asking us, what is the major alkene which is formed? Right. And in your chapter, haloalkenes and haloarenes, what they told us was, or rather, <clears throat> you have the beta elimination taking place. Okay, first of all, let's talk about alpha, beta, and gamma carbon atoms. The bromine is attached to this particular carbon atom, correct? 
this carbon becomes the alpha carbon atom. Next, the carbon atoms which are attached to the alpha carbon are the beta. So we have three beta carbon atoms. Now, when this particular molecule reacts with um, sodium ethoxide, that is NaOET in ethanol, it is going to lead to a beta elimination. They've given you that part as well. All you need to know is, all you need to figure out is what the major product is. Now, let's think about the beta carbons. Okay, uh, I'm going to call this one. I'm going to call this carbon two, and I'm going to call this one three. That is this one, right? Um, the first carbon, that is this carbon atom, does not have any hydrogen atoms. So this beta carbon atom cannot undergo a beta elimination reaction with the alpha carbon. Next, let's look at the second and the third one. Number two will give us the product. Okay, so I'm going to write the product as well of the beta elimination reaction. Okay, so if the second beta carbon atom has the replacement of, I mean, has the hydrogen getting eliminated, we will get CH3, C, CH3, CH3, uh, C, um, and double bond CH3, single bond CH2, and CH3. Now, this is the first, first type of product that we would expect. Now, the second one is when I consider that this particular carbon atom lost a hydrogen, right? So, let's write the product. So, when the third carbon atom loses the hydrogen, then we have CH3, C, CH3, CH3, C, double bond, and you have a CH3, obviously, <clears throat> CH, CH3. Now, if you remember, in the same beta elimination topic, we had something called as the Seitzeff rule. According to this rule, the more substituted alkene is the preferred product. And because of that rule, our third carbon, like if you have this case, this carbon atom is just attached to three other hydrogens. However, on this, in this case, this carbon atom is attached to a carbon atom and this one is attached to two different carbon atoms. And because of that, this product is the preferred product over this one. So beta elimination reaction will take place from this carbon atom and not this one because of the Seitzeff rule. Again, this particular question is pretty straightforward. You don't even have to predict what the product is. It's just that you need to see which is the major product. And based on Seitzeff rule, it is the more substituted product that is going to be the major one. I hope the next question you have over here is we need to identify the products which are formed in this particular reaction. Now, we've been given A, we need to identify both A and B. And this is again going to is this is obviously from uh, haloalkenes and haloenes, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate them as two different reactions because I do not want to look at them as one. <laughs> no, that won't work. So what we have over here is bromobenzene, right? Now when bromobenzene reacts with sodium and dry ether. What is the product form? This is nothing but the Fittig reaction. So according to Fittig reaction, when you have bromobenzene, and this reacts with two molecules of sodium and another molecule of obviously bromobenzene, and this in the presence of dry ether gives us diphenyl. So, diphenyl plus 2NABR. So, this is the Williamson's, re uh, sorry, Fittig reaction. Williamson is an ethers. Um, this is the Fittig reaction. So, the product is going to be diphenyl. The next one over here is reaction of bromobenzene with magnesium and dry ether. Now we would assume oh, if sodium is reacting like this, magnesium will also react like this. So it's prob probably they, you have the same product, right? Wrong. 
So when bromobenzene reacts with magnesium and dry ether, this is actually the reaction with metals. So Mg and dry ether. Now this is the reaction with metals and it gives us the product MgBr. This reminds you of the Grignard's reagent. It is. So this is the formation of Grignard's reagent. And when uh, bromobenzene reacts with uh, magnesium and dry ether, it gives us Grignard's reagent. I'm going to quickly erase all of this. Um, and we are going to go forward to the next question. So we've been given, uh, this is the or part of question number 32. We've been given various, uh, you know, reactants and products, and we need to figure out how we got from the reactant to the product. And for such questions, it's always better to write the structure of the reactant and the product, and then work out how they, how the product was formed. So I'm just going to say R. The first one is butene to iodobutane. Now butene is, I'm going to assume you know how to write the chemical formulae. So CH2, double bond, CH, single bond, CH2, CH3. Now this is giving us what iodo, one iodobutane, which means I, CH2, 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 <laughs> CH3. Now, the moment I look at this, I assumed, oh, maybe it's a direct reaction of hydrogen iodide with the alkene to give us iodobutane. But when hydrogen iodide would react with this, this would give us a CH3, CH, I, oh, one, two, three, sorry, CH2, CH3. It would give us two iodobutane instead of one iodobutane, and that is not the product that we want. So th this is based on markov nikos rule, which means the negative part of the addendum gets attached to the carbon atom, having the more number of hydrogen, sorry, less number of hydrogen atoms. So instead, we will follow something called as the anti markov nikos rule or the peroxide rule or the peroxide effect. So basically, this particular reaction, we, we have to react. And remember, anti markov nikos rule is applicable only for HBr. It is not for HI or HCl. It's only for HBr. So what we will do is we will convert this from an alkene. So we are going to convert alkene to a bromo alkene. And this is then going to get converted to an iodo alkene. This is the plan. Right. Now, first of all, we have uh, CH2, that is but2ene. So but2ene reacts with HBr or butene, I'm so sorry, this butene. Butene reacts with HBr in the presence of peroxide. In this case, we are having C6H5CO taken twice. I believe we had, you had learned about all of this, I mean, the mechanism of this reaction as well in class 11. And if you've forgotten about it, that's completely normal. Honestly, it's normal. So just go check it out and just revise that concept and that'll be perfectly good. Um, and the product is going to be CH2, CH, CH2, CH3. And this is going to be CH2. And here we have a bromine group attached to it. The next step is going to be the exchange of halogen atoms, where this particular molecule is going to react with NAI in dry acetone. And this would give us CH3, sorry, CH2, I, CH2, CH2, CH3. So we got our product that is iodobutane, that is, um, or iodobutane, one iodobutane from two 
from an alkene. And the reason we had to take the long route is because of Markovnikov's route. The next one is benzene to acetophenone. Again, first starting, we start with the drawing of the structure. So the first is benzene. And this gives rise to acetophenone. This is acetophenone. And this particular reaction is actually a direct reaction of preparation of ketone from benzene or a substituted benzene. And this is a friedel crafts acylation reaction. So benzene reacts with CH3COCl in the presence of, you guessed it, anhydrous. ALCL3 to give us acetophenone. Pretty straightforward, right? That's it. The third one is ethanol, ethanol to propane nitrile. Um, I'm going to erase these. So ethanol to propane nitrile. This one was actually, I had to think a bit for this one, but we got there. It was easy. In the end of the day, when I realized how easy this reaction was, is actually a little bit surprised so our okay so here you've been given ethanol which is ch3 ch2 oh and this is going to give us ch3 ch2 and nitrile means c n group is then added to it <clears throat> So what we need to do is we need to find out where we have the synthesis of nitrites. I was actually in the first chapter that is, uh, according to the first organic chapter, haloalkanes and haloarenes, you have an entire table where you have the formation or rather reaction of the alkyl halides with various nucleophiles to give us various products. And one of those products was a nitrile group. So we are able to use a haloalkane to give a nitrite. And we can convert an alcohol to a haloalkane. That is basically the first method of preparation of haloalkanes. So what we're going to do is we are going to convert the ethanol to an alkyl halide. And that is going to again undergo a nucleophilic substitution reaction to give us a nitrite. So CH3, CH2, OH reacts with or reacts with HCl in the presence of ZnCl2 to give us CH3, CH2, Cl plus H2O. Now, this particular molecule is going to undergo a reaction with KCN. So, on reaction with KCN, the nucleophilic substitution reaction takes place where the Cl is going to get replaced by cyanide or nitrile group, rather, I'm sorry, to give us propane nitrile. So, remember, the tables in your textbooks are actually very important. Now, the next question, question number 34. You have a reaction. Uh, we need to write the products of these reaction. So when uh, so alcohol, this is an alcohol, and this reacts with PCC. PCC is pyridinium chlorochromate. When this particular reaction takes place, the product is going to be a double bond O because the alcohol has gotten oxidized to give us a ketone. And pyridinium chlorochromate does not affect the double bond. So that is why we still have the double bond in the product as well. The second one over here is uh, you have an OH and a COH group. And this basically is an esterification reaction. And the product for this particular reaction is, and this obviously also from alcohols, phenols, and sorry, Aldehydes. I think it's a mix of both alcohols, phenols, ethers, and aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. So COOH and OCOCH3. These are the product form. The third one is a reaction of 
the ketone group present and this reacts with CH3MGBr, which is the Grignard's reagent. Now, alcohols can be synthesized from Grignard's reagent. So the general reaction given in your textbook is R, C, O, R reacts with R dash M, G, X to give us R, C, R dash, R, M, G, oh, sorry, O, M, G, X. And this on reaction with H2 would give us a tertiary alcohol because we are assuming the R groups are carbon atoms or like alkyl groups, M, G, O, okay. So Mg, OH, X. So based on this particular reaction, you can assume, we can easily assume that this carbon atom is this one. Okay, and basically you have the CH3 also present over there. So here, if you notice, if you try and apply the same reaction to this one, to this molecule, the product is going to be CH3 and then OH. That's it. The next one, uh, question A is a mechanism. I'm sure you would be able to do it. If not, do let me know and I will upload a video solving the same question. Uh, the next one is question B. Write the equation for the preparation of 2-methyl-2 ethoxypropane by Williamson synthesis. Now, before we talk about the product that has been formed, let's talk about Williamson synthesis itself. Sorry, I struck it. So according to Williamson synthesis, Rx reacts with R dash O and A, right, to give us R O R dash plus N A X. Okay. Now the one thing, now this is the Williamson's ether synthesis. Now, the product we've, we've gotten from this particular reaction is 2-methyl-2-methoxypropane. Now, 2-methyl-2-methoxypropane is basically CH3OCCH3CH3CH3. So we have a propane group and a methyl group has been attached to it. And then we have a two uh, methoxy group that has been added over here. So we need to write a reaction where we get this particular product. Now, one thing we need to remember is that for Williamson's ether synthesis, you cannot have the alkyl, the alkyl halide can only be primary, which means this carbon atom cannot be the halide. It cannot be the alkyl. It cannot be a part of the alkyl halide. On the other hand, the methyl group is going to be the part of the alkyl halide. So we'll have CH3 Br reacting with CH3 C, CH3 CH3 um, O and A giving us CH3 O C CH3 CH3 CH3. That's it. And plus NABR. This is just, this was again a very easy question. You just need to remember this one very important fact that an alkyl halide, the alkyl halide for the Williamson's ether synthesis has to be a primary alkyl halide. Now, the next question, question number 36. Now, here we have been given a long question and trust me, looking at it as one long sentence is going to just hurt your brain. Instead, let's break it up and first of all, understand what they've given us. So here we've been given um, that we have an organic compound A. Now, A's molecular formula is C4H8O. Now, this is giving us an orange-red precipitate with 2,4-DNP reagent. Now, 2,4-DNP reagent.
it gives us an orange precipitate. The next piece of information is that it does not reduce Tollens reagent. So Tollens, it does not reduce it, but it gives us a yellow PPT with an iodo form. Iodoform, like on iodoform test, it gives us a yellow, or rather it gives us a yellow PPT on, uh, of iodoform on heating with NaOH and I2. Next, A on reduction with NaBH4. Okay, wait. So A is undergoing reduction reaction using NaBH4. And this is giving us compound B, which undergoes dehydration dehydration on heating with concentrated H2SO4 to form compound C, which on ozonolysis will give us two molecules of ethanol, CH3, CHO. We need to find A, B, and C and write the structures and write the reaction of compound A with NaOH and I2 and NaBH4. Looking at this question, even now, <laughs> I would be terrified. Like, I think when I was in grade 12, I did not like this question, honestly. Probably came up in my paper. I don't know. I will solve that paper one day and we will discuss that as well. So, first of all, 2 for dnp reagent giving us an orange PPT means that it's an aldehyde or a ketone. Right. Now, on reaction with Tollens reagent, it's not giving us anything. So it's definitely a ketone. And the fact that it gave us a positive iodoform means it has a methyl group. Now, um, so basically, this particular molecule, what we have, what we will also do next is to figure out the structure of A. We need to work our way back from this CH3CHO to A. Now, ethanol as a product for ozonolysis means that when CH, okay, so ozonolysis reaction uh, basically involves two steps. Right. And based on whatever we've been given, we know that it has four carbon atoms. So it's safe to say our compound C also has four carbon atoms. It's just that we need to figure out where the alkene, the double bond could be present such that we get two molecules of two atoms of carbon in each molecule of ethanol that is formed, which means it has to have it in between the molecule. So it's going to be CH3, CH, CH, CH3. To recap on ozonolysis reaction, do check out the video that I did about the various reactions, various reactions of alkenes that was for, again, grade 11. So this is, uh, this is the compound C. Now, when this particular molecule undergoes ozonolysis, it will give us two molecules of ethanol. And I am going to write the chemical reaction here. Obviously, I can't stop myself. So CH double bond, CH, CH3 reacts with O3. And we get that five-membered ring where we have CH3, CH, O, CH, CH3, O, and another O. And then you have this. You have breaking of these bonds taking place. And this gives us two in the presence of zinc and H2O. And this gives us, and like this alkene is symmetrical. And that's how we got to know that the double bond has to be at the second carbon. And so you have CH3, CHO, two molecules of ethanol form. The next point is that when, so C is this alkene, right? Now, some molecule underwent dehydration reaction in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid to give us C. 
Now, alcohols are molecules which undergo dehydration in the presence of H2SO4. So, C double, sorry, <coughs> excuse me. So, when we have an alcohol that is C, C, O, H, this undergoes reaction with H2SO4 and heat to give us C double bond C and an alkene plus H2O. So the alkene is this particular product which has been formed over here. So CH3, CH double bond, CH, CH3. Now when this is the product, what could be the alcohol that formed it? So the alcohol OH can either be at this carbon or it can be at this carbon. Either way, it's going to be the same. So CH3, CH, OH, CH2, CH3. So this is the product B. Right. Um, basically, product uh, the B molecule B underwent dehydration in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid to give us product C, which is a which is an alkene. The next one is reduction reaction. So something has to undergo reduction to give us an alcohol, and obviously. Ketones and aldehydes are a very good example of something that undergoes reduction to give us alcohols because they have a double bond, right? Now, an aldehyde, sorry, an, uh, and one more important thing over here is the fact that B is a secondary alcohol. So we eliminate aldehydes because aldehydes would give us primary alcohols. We don't want a primary alcohol. We want a secondary alcohol. This means that our compound A is a ketone and not an aldehyde. So basically you have R, C, O, R dash undergoing a reaction with NaBH4 to give us <clears throat> R, C, H, O, H, R dash. So this is the ketone, right? And this gave us the secondary alcohol. Now, the OH is going to get replaced by a double bond O, which means CH3, C, double bond O, CH2, CH3 is going to be our ketone, which on reaction with NaBH4 gives us CH3, CH, OH, CH2, CH3. And one other important thing, it has a methyl group, which means it will give us a positive to the iodoform test. And uh, we need to show a reaction with NaOH and I2. So when ketone undergoes reaction with, okay, I'm just going to write it here, NaOH, I2, uh, it means that it's reacting with NaOI. And this gives us CH3, CH2, CO, O, N, A, plus CH, I, 3. And the last reaction is reaction with NaBH4, which is already mentioned over here. Oh, sorry. The next question, draw, um, um, sorry, write the major products of the following reaction, that is B. So we have reaction, uh, the reactant is a nitrile group and you have a double bond as well over here. This one reaction with dibal H and H3O plus, it's a direct reaction of the synthesis of um, aldehydes. And the product is obviously going to be an aldehyde. And dibal H does not affect the double bond. So the product for this reaction is CH3, CH, double bond CH, CH2, CHO. The next one is reaction with CrO3. This is a basic oxidation reaction where you have CH3, CH2, CHO. Oh, sorry, CH3, CHO. I'm really sorry. I know where I got the extra carbon atom from. Um, 
so yeah that's it for today or <laughs> that's it for this video um we discussed the various reaction based questions for the previous years and do check out the rest of the playlist um the link is in the description below do reach out if you have any questions queries doubt or suggestions of something or like if you find something super difficult do let me know i would love to help you with the same